Hello, good evening. Good evening, teacher. Welcome. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, teacher. Welcome to a new class. My name is Javier Gomez, and this is Beginner Module 2. <laughs> okay. Uh, to begin, we are going to review vocabulary, and I will share some uh, extra vocabulary for you, right? Let me show you this. Okay. Oh, okay. More vocabulary. Vegetables. Listen, please. Vegetables. Vegetables. Read and listen. One. Sorry. Let me check. I know. Vegetables. I know. Okay, good. Now, listen. More vegetables. Read and listen. One. Carrots. Two. Cabbage. Three. Broccoli. Four. Oops, sorry. Cauliflower. Listen. Five. Leeks. Six. Cucumbers. Seven. Brussels sprouts. Eight. Corn. Nine. Lettuce. Ten. Asparagus. Eleven. An eggplant. Twelve. Beans. Thirteen. Peas. Fourteen. Celery. Fifteen. Garlic. Now listen again and repeat. Carrots. Cabbage. Broccoli. Cauliflower. Leeks. Cucumbers. Brussels sprouts. Corn. Lettuce. Asparagus. An eggplant. Beans. Peas. Celery. Garlic. Teacher, tiene desconectado el micrófono. Uh, eggplant is what we know about, uh, like berenjena, right? Berenjena, eggplant. It's like uh, la planta del huevo. <laughs> because look at the berenjena, it's similar to an egg, right? So that's why they say the eggplant in English, right? Okay. Brussels sprout is uh, um, coles de Bruselas. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's a special. You can find it in Super Selector, right? Okay, now let's continue with more. More fruit. More listen, fruits. Please. Read and listen. One. A tangerine. Two. A grapefruit. Three. A lemon. Four. A lime. Five. An orange. Six. Grapes. Seven. A pineapple. Eight. Bananas. Nine. A pear. Ten. Apricots. Eleven. Peaches. Twelve. Strawberries. Thirteen. Raspberries. Fourteen. A honeydew melon. Fifteen. An avocado. Sixteen. A papaya. Seventeen. A mango. Eighteen. A kiwi. Nineteen. A watermelon. 
20. Raisins. 21. Figs. 22. Prunes. 23. Dates. Now listen again and repeat. A tangerine. A grapefruit. A lemon. A lime. An orange. Grapes. A pineapple. Bananas. A pear. Apricots. Peaches. Strawberries. Oh. Raspberries. A honeydew melon. An avocado. A papaya. A mango. A kiwi. A watermelon. Raisins. Figs. Prunes. Dates. Okay. These are many fruits. Uh, we can include some Salvadorian fruit like uh, papaturro, right? Uh, cincuya. Um, and there are many Salvadorian fruit that is Guanaba. included here, right? Guanpera. Guanaba. Uh -huh. <laughs> Guanaba Jocote. too, right? It's not included. Jocotation. <laughs> yeah, jocote. Jocote is the same in its Yes. In the United States, they have some jocotes, but are very big and not tasty, right? No saben bien. But they have jocotes. They are like this, very big. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Now we're going to, um, to start with the presentation for today. And let me see. This is the one, right? Okay. Give me a second here. Okay, today's class, right? We are going to learn today about adverse of frequency. Adverse of frequency, okay? This is the topic for today. Okay, what we are going to learn today, please, Brian, can you read the the objective for today, please? Yes, teacher. By the end of this class, you will learn how to use adverbs of frequency when talking about food. Food. So we're going to continue talking about food, right? Okay. That's it. Okay. Now, thank you, Brian. You're welcome. Now, uh, the book. The vocabulary for today is always, usually, often, sometimes, hardly ever, and never. What are these? These are hours of frequency. Okay? So we're going to learn how to, to practice them. So please, repeat after me, please. Always. Usually. Often, sometimes, incorrect, sometimes, mm -mm. it's sometimes, sometimes, hardly ever, never. Okay, with the letter B, never, uh, you have to uh, put the, the down, I mean, the down lips uh, back of the upper teeth, right? Uh, con esa B, tenemos que poner los labios de abajo 
en la parte de atrás de los dientes de arriba. And we say the, the. Never, never, right? Okay, good. Now, let's start with the topic. What are the adverbs of frequency? Okay. The adverbs of frequency or frequency adverbs uh, show the frequency when you do something in the, in the present, in the simple present. Okay? So, in this case, uh, we have most of the most common are always, usually, sometimes, and never. And please pay attention that the frequency goes from zero to 100. Zero to 100. So, in this case, always is all the time. For example, I always breathe, repeat, all right? <sighs> always. Because if, if not, some, some uh, men in black are going to visit me, right? Unos negritos con un me van a visitar si dejo respirar, right? So I need to, to breathe, uh, breathe all the time. Always, right? Usually. Mm, usually is like, not all the time, but very frequently, right? Casi todo el tiempo, usually. And sometimes are like... A, Yeah, sometimes yes, yeah, sometimes not, right? And never is never. I never eat, for example, pacaya. Never, right? Okay, and then we have these examples. Listen, please. I always play soccer on Saturday. I usually check email in the evening. Evening. I sometimes go dancing on weekends. I never take a nap in the afternoon. Siesta, nap, right? Okay, and what is the structure? Look, like the simple present, we have the subject, the verb, and the complement. The subject, the verb, and the complement, right? And then between the subject and the verb, entre el sujeto y el verbo, Vamos a colocar el adverbio. ¿Ok? Remember, the adverb affects the action. The adjective affects the noun, right? El adjetivo nos describe el nombre y el adverbio nos describe al verbo, a la acción, right? So it means that uh, la acción de jugar se ve afectada por el adverbio always. I play soccer is normal, but when you say I always play soccer is Quiere decir que esa acción la realizo siempre. ¿Ok? Then he says, I usually check email. Again, subject I. The frequency adverb here. And the verb check. Right? I sometimes go dancing. Subject I. Go, the, ad, the verb. And the adverb is in the middle. Right? Ok. I never take a nap. In this context, the, the sentence is affirmative, but it contains a negative connotation. Tiene una idea negativa porque lleva never, right? Pero la oración siempre es afirmativa. Okay, and again, subject, the verb take, and in the middle, the adverb never, right? Be careful. Place the frequency adverb before the verb. Siempre tiene que ir antes del verbo, right? In the simple present. Don't say, I play always soccer. <laughs> I play always. No, no. Or, always I play. <laughs> no. Incorrect. Okay? Or, don't say, he checks usually email. No, 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 no. Or, he checks email usually. No. Incorrect, right? It's always between, between the subject and the verb, right? Good. With this information... We go to some activities. Uh, these are called leisure activities, right? Actividades que hacemos cuando tenemos el tiempo libre. Leisure activity, right? Okay, listen, please. Vocabulary. Leisure activities. Read and listen. One. Exercise. Two. Take a nap. Three. Listen to music. Four. Read. Five. Play soccer. Six. 
Check email. 7. Go out for dinner. 8. Go to the movies. 9. Go dancing. 10. Visit friends. Oops, sorry, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. Movimos algo acá. Excuse Vocabulary. Me. Again, again. Leisure activities. Excuse me. Read and listen. One. Exercise. Two. Take a nap. Three. Listen to music. Four. Read. Five. Play soccer. Six. Check email. Seven. Go out for dinner. Eight. Go to the movies. Nine. Go dancing. Ten. Visit friends. Now listen again and repeat. Exercise. Take a nap. Listen to music. Read. Play soccer. Check email. Go out for dinner. Go to the movies. Go dancing. Visit friends. Okay. Any question? Any question about this? No, no teacher. No. Okay. Now we're going to make an exercise. I have a right? question. Yes. Tell me. Tell me. Come on. Who is it? Cuando decimos exercise, eh, si quiero decir hago ejercicio, tengo que decir make a exercise o solo el verbo. Okay. Listen. There is a uh, who's talking to me, please? Uh, ¿Quién me está hablando? Perdón. Cory, Cory Monteros. Cory, okay, Cory. Cory, when, when we say do, <coughs> sorry, is something you, someone else repeat. Es algo que alguien lo ha hecho, ya está hecho, y solo vamos a repetirlo nosotros, right? Okay. So in exercise, everybody does. Todos hacen ejercicio. But when you cook, you, for example, you make dinner. Porque la cena no la ha he hecho mm. nadie todavía. Usted la va a crear. Okay. La va a hacer. Like a poem, right? Como escribir una, un poema. What is correct to yeah. say? I do a poem or I make a poem? I What make a poem. Make a poem. Porque es algo nuevo. Algo que todavía no se ha hecho. Pero si yo repito oh, okay. algo que es bien común, que todos lo repiten, right? Ok, entonces con do. Uh, do. Okay. No es una regla 100% estricta, ¿verdad? Porque ya en la hora de la práctica a veces los confunden, pero la gramática pura es, do es algo que ya alguien ha hecho y make es algo que es nuevo. Se está creando, ok. Que se está creando. Guarda esa idea en la mente. Y el do en este caso es exercise, ¿verdad? No es algo que levantar pesas es algo nuevo, ¿no? O sea, es, nuevo, sí. es algo que, que, que usted solo va a hacer, do, ¿ok? Okay, teacher. Thank Good. You. And there is also another another uh, verb. También hay un verbo que se refiere a, a ir al, al gimnasio, por ejemplo. Usted usa workout. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Es otro verbo que puedo usar cuando se refiere a ejercicio, especialmente en el gym. Workout. I work out at the gym, you say, right? Okay. okay? Good. Any extra okay. question? No. Okay. So. No, it's time to practice. We're going to do something, right? Listen to the to the structure. Subject, frequency adverb, verb, right? And the, the adverbs are always, usually, sometimes, hardly ever, and never. Again, always, usually, sometimes, Hardly ever and never. Okay? The first one is usually, uh, always, sorry, and the last one is never, right? Always, never. And in the middle we have... Often. Uh, often is also another, another. We're going to... Oh. There are many. 
eh, almost always, seldom, etcétera, etcétera. But in this day, to begin, only to begin, we are going to use only five, right? Five others. Let yeah. me show you. Yes? What's the mean of hardly ever? Hardly ever is casi nunca. Hardly ever. Y almost always, que es otro también, es casi siempre, almost always. Pero vamos a trabajar solo con estos por ahora. Okay. No, son seis, ¿eh? Oh, yes. Eh, often. Yeah. Por ahí alguien me lo mencionó, ¿verdad? Pues sí está enlistado. Excuse me. Vamos a incluirlo entonces. So, always, usually, often, sometimes, hardly ever, and never. Entonces vamos a hacer, usar seis. Six. Always, okay. usually, often, sometimes, hardly ever, and never. Right? Ok. Now, let's include the actions. Ok. Number one, exercise. Eh, Beatriz Galdame, please. Beatriz, can you give me one example using exercise? And using always, often, sometimes, never, etc., etc., right? Ok. I usually do exercise on the morning. Okay, you morning. usually do exercise in the morning, right? Thank you, thank you very much. Good example, right? Now, uh, Brian, please take a nap. I never take a nap in the afternoon. Why, Brian? It's necessary. <laughs> okay, no, I'm kidding. So, um, thank you very much. It's a good example. Uh, Chris. Christopher Sanchez. No, Christopher is not today with us, right? Uh, Cody, please. Cody, yes. listen to music. I often listen to music in the afternoon. Okay, nice. Read. Uh, Delmi Carranza. Delmi? Hello. Hello. Give me one example, please. Um, I, I never, uh, I never play soccer. No, 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 read. Read. Hola, hola. Uh, read. Okay, don't worry. I never play soccer. That's okay. Don't oh. worry. That's a good example, right? Can you hear me? Yes? Delmi? ¿Me puede escuchar, Delmi? Hello? Cortado, le escucho. Tengo mala señal. Oh, sorry. Pero está lloviendo por ahí, Delmi. Está lloviendo. Un poco. Un poquito. Bueno, ojalá que después de la lluvia, después de la lluvia, se oiga mejor. So. Uh, now, who's going to help me? Erika. Erika, it's a pleasure. Ya, se me había perdido algunas clases, ¿verdad, Erika? Yes. Pero todo bien. Yeah. Okay, good. So, okay. come on. Give me an example with read. Read. Number four. Read. Read. I usually read in the afternoon. Okie dokie. That's nice. Check email. Check email. Who's going to help me? Uh, Flor, please. Can you help me, Flor? Yes, teacher. I sometimes check email Very in the good. afternoon. Perfect. Number seven, please. Uh, Gabriela Hernandez. Often. Gabriela? Hello. I often. Number seven, right? Out for dinner in room restaurant. Okay. Uh, in this moment, no, right? Because of the coronavirus. But uh, according to the new resolution, de acuerdo a la nueva resolución de la sala, hasta el 7 de septiembre vamos a poder uh, go out for dinner. <laughs> hasta el 7 de septiembre se abre todo, ¿verdad? Así que ya, ya lo volvieron a aplazar. <laughs> A este paso vamos a llegar a diciembre, ¿verdad? Pero bien, it's a good example, Gabriela, that you go out for dinner, right? Nice, thank you. Now go to the movies. 
Eh, Gloria Escalante, please. Yes, teacher. One example, we go to the movies. Okay. I always I sometimes okay. go to the movies. To the movies. Thank you very much. Eh, Roberto, parece que tiene encendido el micrófono. Ok. Thank you, Roberto. Ok, now. Eh, Graciela de Duarte. Graciela, please help me. Go dancing. I hardly never go dancing. I hardly ever, right? Okay. Never. Oh, I never. Oh, sorry. Even salsa? I hardly ever. Ah, you hardly. Uh, maybe. <laughs> you I hardly, hardly ever. ever go dancing. Go dance. Oh, sorry. Okay, now. Lupita, please visit friends. I always visit friends. Okie dokie. It's a good example, right? I repeat, in this moment, go out for dinner, go to the movies, go dancing, visit friends. It's not possible for the moment, right? For your no. life, please. Don't do it, please. For the moment, right? Okay, now, uh, there is one exception, right? With sometimes, I will tell you this. The only exception is that sometimes can be placed with before the subject, between the subject and the verb, and at the end of the sentence, right? Es decir, que el único que se nos sale del guacal es sometimes. Solo este se nos sale del guacal. De ahí todos son iguales. Listen. So it's correct to say, pay attention. Sometimes I go dancing on weekends. I sometimes go dancing on weekends. I go dancing on weekends sometimes. The three sentences are correct. But listen, only with sometimes. Es el único rebelde, right? Okay, now. The next part, right? We're going to make an exercise. Listen. Unscramble the words and write sentences in the simple present. And then we have usually on weekends, go shopping, she. Now, the first thing you have to identify is the subject. Lo primero que hacemos en un ejercicio como esto es identificar quién es el sujeto. What is the subject number one? She. 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 Right. she. And then the verb is, what is the verb? Usually. Go no, no, no. The verb. Go. 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 Or oh, in this case, the specific activity, go go shop, shopping, sorry, go shopping, right? The favorite activity of women. The favorite activity of women, right? Go shopping. Yeah. And in this I'm context is she goes because it's third person singular, right? Okay, good. And then between the subject and the verb, we have the, the frequency adverb. What is the frequency adverb in number one? Usually. Usually, usually. usually. Okay, so... She usually goes shopping on weekends. Nice. Now, who's going to help me? Jennifer Duarte. Jennifer? Hello, teacher. Hello, welcome. Uh, ¿Qué tal si yo, Jennifer? ¿Ya mejorcita? Mejor, gracias. Okay. It's a pleasure, Jennifer. Okay, now. Gracias. Listen, Jennifer. What is the subject? Primero identifiquemos el sujeto, Jennifer. ¿Cuál sería? En la número dos. Number two, yes. Number two, yes. ¿Cuál sería el sujeto? ¿De quién estamos hablando? My sister. Right? My sister, correct, right? ¿Y cuál sería la acción? What is the action, Jennifer? My sister, go dancing. Go dancing, ok. So, en medio de esos dos, usted me va a poner sometimes, ok? Y lo demás, pues My ya, sister. ya es la colita, ok, come on. Okay. Ready, Jennifer? One, two, three. My sister, sometimes, go dancing, on Friday. My goodness, congratulations. Very good. That's it, right? Yes. But as I explained, uh, sometimes it's the, the rebel, right? Sometimes it's, it's el rebelde. Ese podemos poner al principio, entre el sujeto y el verbo, y al final también. Okay? Now, let's go to the next one. Let me see. Uh, José Lobo todavía no ha venido, ¿verdad? José Lobo? No, okay. 
Eh, María Maya, María, please. Number three. Ready, um, María? Ok, what is the subject? ¿Cuál sería el sujeto? Uh -huh. El sujeto, el de quién estamos hablando, pues quién hace la acción. Y no I. One. Ay, I. correct. Ay, thank you. Ya comenzamos bien, María. Sigamos entonces. What is the action? ¿Cuál sería la, la acción? What is the action? Check, check email. Perfect. Check email. Entonces vamos a hacer lo mismo. En medio de esos dos le vamos a poner el frequency adverb. Ready, María? One. I. Two, three. I check email. No, no, no. Ne le faltó, le faltó el, el, el adverbio. Después del I va el adverbio, ok. I. Am. Um, no. I. Never. I never, correct. Continue, continue. Check email in uh -huh. the morning. Perfect, nice. Thank you. Ok, number four. Number four. Eh, Maritza, please. Eh, number four, please. The same dynamic, Maritza. The subject, the verb, the frequency adverb, and the complement, right? Ready, Maritza? Can you hear me? Maritza? Por ahí alcanzo a escuchar el micrófono, pero quizás no, no, no se escucha bien la voz. Can you hear me, Maritza? Ok, vamos a ver si después se, se incorpora, Maritza. So, let me see. Uh, eh, Roberto Quijano, please. Come on, Roberto. Yeah, teacher. Number four, please. Uh, my my door hours um, take the bus to work. Excellent. Very good. My daughter always... Always take uh -huh. the bus to work, the right? Bus, the work. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very okay. much. Excellent. Number five, please. Number five, it's. Mm, give me a second. Walter Bonilla, right? Walter, can you help me with number five, please? Number five. Say, so, um. Yeah. He, este, we uh -huh. Very good. never Continue. walk to school. Excellent. We never walk, walk, right? Walk. Thank you very much. And who's next? Xiomara Guerra, right? Xiomara, please. Number six. Um, my brother sometimes after work visit his friends. Okay, wait, 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 Xiomara. What is the action? What is the action? ¿Cuál sería la acción? Visit. 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 Okay, good. So remember, okay. it's subject and verb. Okay, again, again, come on. My brother, sometimes, he visit his friends after work. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. So it's clear, right? I guess we don't need more. It's clear, right? Um... Now, commercial, right? Um, me recomendaron encarecidamente que le suplicara que termináramos hasta la sección 3. O sea, hasta ahorita ya tendríamos que terminar la sección 3 y muchos no la han terminado aún, ¿verdad? Eh, si hay alguna, alguna duda, ¿ok? Um, si hay alguna duda de algún ejercicio pasado, todavía podemos resolverla juntos, ¿verdad? Y así todos aprendemos. Eh, recuérdense que el WhatsApp, ahí estoy yo pendiente. A veces, bueno, tengo clases en otro lugar, ¿verdad? Trabajo con el Ministerio de, de Educación también, la mañana, ¿verdad? Pero igual, ahí soy, estoy pendiente de ustedes siempre, ¿verdad? Así que en el grupo pueden preguntarme lo que quieran. ¿Ah? Y también esta clase es precisamente para eso. Es decir, yo les preparo material, les explico y todo, pero eh, básicamente es uh, ayudarlos a ustedes para que estén en la, en la plataforma. Eh, por ahí me estaba comentando uno de los compañeros de apoyo técnico que uno de los errores que cometemos bien seguido y que a veces no es culpa de ustedes, 
que algunos tableros en las computadoras traen una comilla, pero no es la doble, sino que solo es una. Pero la comilla es como dobladita, ¿sí? ¿Ok? Y en el tablero, por ejemplo, en el mío, en mi tablero, ¿verdad? Después del cero aparece la, el apóstrofe. ¿Ok? Entonces debemos probar cuál es el apóstrofe y usarlo siempre, ¿verdad? Eh, es el que está rectecito, ¿verdad? Que tiene que aparecer rectecito. A veces un poquito gordito de abajo, pero casi siempre va así, en esta dirección, ¿verdad? El acento, obviamente, ya lo sabemos, ¿verdad? Y, y en todos los tableros funciona que no se escribe, pero cuando ya escribimos la vocal ya aparece. Ahí creo que no hay problema. Pero me decían que hay un, algunos tableros que tiene, aparte del acento, tiene una comilla, una comilla, no doble, sino que una, y tiene el apóstrofe. Entonces tenemos que eh, aprender a diferenciarlos y probar, ¿verdad? Si, si le sale malo, después ponga, no, quizás esta tecla no es, voy a probar con esta tecla, es, tal vez este es, ¿verdad? Y otra cosa, pues, eh, que ahora es, te estábamos viendo con una compañera de ustedes, ¿verdad? Es que a ella no, no le aparecía la I mayúscula, sino que le funcionaba la I minúscula. ¿verdad? Entonces son como truquitos que yo sé que, eh, inclusive ahora estábamos hablando con el compañero de, de, de in, inglés corporativo, eh, que son cosas que pues ellos están para apoyarles a ustedes en ese aspecto, están ellos a sus órdenes, ¿verdad? Igual yo también estoy a sus órdenes, pero que a veces son cositas que, ¿verdad? Tenemos que irlas trabajando juntos, así que las disculpas del caso, pero igual voy a dejar este pequeño espacio por si hay alguna duda, ¿verdad? Algún ejercicio pasado, este, podemos trabajarla juntos ahorita. ¿Ok? Antes de entrar a la clase de ahora, que es el 4.9, sería, ¿verdad? So, please, any commentary, any question, any problem? Teacher. Ajá, Iris, please. Iris. Ajá. Yo he tenido experiencia también de que a veces eh, se nos van los deditos, ¿no? Y a veces o, o ponemos alguna letrita de más, o... o... Un espacio, ¿verdad? Entre palabras. Ajá, Ajá. este, porque a mí ya me, ya me ha pasado, pero eh, recuerda que la vez pasada yo le comenté y a veces uno mm. no capta los errores o, o, o transversa, digamos, la, las letras, porque yo parece que había puesto la R antes o después, no, no recuerdo exactamente, pero okay. si a veces hay pequeños detalles pero que a veces en el momento de estar, o sea, como que uno dice, no, pero si lo he escrito bien y todo, eh, llega un momento en que uno tal vez se, se medio frustra, le voy a decir así. <risa> sí. yeah, y entonces right. uno no logra ver con claridad yeah. dónde está el error, está el porque error? a veces son errores pequeños eh, eh, en, la, en el momento de escribir. Entonces, okay. eh, ahí es, es, bueno, la captura de pantalla para que, ya otra persona le orienta más a uno, ya cuando uno ya... Correcto. Eh, si gustan, Iris, para, para usted y para todos, eh, cuando ustedes manden un problemita así, vean el, el punto, ¿verdad? Estamos en la sección 1, 2, 3, 4. Entonces, pónganme sección 4.2.3. Entonces, ya a mí se me hace más fácil ubicarlo. Entonces, cuando ustedes vean que hay un problema y yo lo ponga, digo... Porque a veces a mí me funciona y a veces a ustedes no les funciona. Entonces digo, ¿qué pasará aquí? Entonces, eh, tomémosle captura de pantalla y pongámosle el número, ¿verdad? Y eso lo podemos estar enviando a los compañeros, ¿verdad? A Oscar, a Jonathan, eh, a Jason, que ellos nos pueden estar colaborando en ese sentido porque eh, ellos tienen control de lo que es la plataforma. Pero, pues, en lo que es la estructura gramatical, pues, yo estoy a sus órdenes, ¿verdad? Algunos tal les he dicho, miren, pero si su oración está buena, pues, pero quizás hay un pequeño espacio que, que se fue, ¿verdad? Uno de los problemas que yo tuve, teacher, disculpe que ah, lo interrumpa. Yes, come on. Es no, de, no, para eso es el espacio, Roberto, come on, come es, on. es de que al principio, no me acuerdo qué ejercicio fue, tenía que comenzar con mayúscula, yo le ponía punto al final y no había que ponerle punto. No había que ponerle y en la mayoría sí. Entonces, por eso, me, por eso me la ponía mala. Entonces, no. luché hasta que me salió bueno. Sí, en, en, en este sentido, Roberto, fíjese que todo es como que dijéramos, como una pequeña burocracia, dijéramos, ¿verdad? Porque al final... Eh, son cuestioncitas técnicas nada más, pero yo sé que, que ustedes entienden los temas 
y eso es lo que me alegra también, ¿verdad? Entonces, eh, ustedes siéntanse conformes que sí entienden el tema y que hacen las oraciones bien, pero que a veces ciertos detallitos técnicos que hay que, que ir superando juntos, ¿verdad? Y entonces, en la medida que ustedes me vayan diciendo, este 4.3, este 5.2, etcétera, etcétera, eh, está mal o, o, o está en una situación técnica diferente. Entonces, vamos a ir colaborando con los compañeros del área técnica y, y, y vamos a ir corrigiendo esos errores, ¿verdad? Así que, eh, gracias, gracias por su colaboración. So, any other question? ¿Alguna otra pregunta? ¿Alguna otra problemita que han tenido ahí que no les daba y que usted, si está correcto, si está correcto. Ok. Vamos a ver. Teacher, Ajá, yo, Graciela. Graciela, que tuve un problema con la palabra eh, Dino Grumi. Porque ah, yo busqué yes. un diccionario, recuerda, yo busqué yes, un I diccionario y porque ahí en la plataforma lo escribían solo con una N. Ajá. También me entró duda. Y entonces oh, yo ok, güey, güey, güey. Pero estamos hablando de dining room o de dinner. La no, comida. Dining room. Dining, oh, room. dining room, sí. Ok. Ajá. Continue. Yo busqué un diccionario y en el diccionario aparecía con doble N. Entonces yo lo escribí así, pero la plataforma me lo puso que estaba incorrecto. Sí, sí. Pero sí, yo hablé con Luis Bonilla, otro, otro joven que está ayudando a la plataforma. Y él Ajá. me envió otro diccionario. Estuvo eso ah, de muy bueno okay. para mí. Me envió un diccionario. Eh, y en ese diccionario sí aparece con una sola N. Pero en el ah. diccionario que yo consulté aparecía con doble N. Ok. Ajá, ese es el problema si yo lo tuve. Entonces cuando ya lo puse con una sola N, ya me lo aceptó. That's it new for me, right? Eso, eso es nuevo también para mí. Eh, porque habíamos quedado de acuerdo, ¿verdad, Graciela? Que... Eh, uh -huh. Dinner era con doble N y Dining Room era con una sola N. Sí. Pero ahora con lo que usted me dice, entiendo que también se este, puede, se puede solo con una N, ¿verdad? Entonces hay sí. que ir ahí superando ah. esas cositas, ¿verdad? Sí, porque sí. después yo investigué otros diccionarios e igual hubo un diccionario que explicaba que con las dos era correcto. Okay. Con una sola o con doble N. Ok. Uh -huh. Igual que en español, como transporte, podemos ponerle con la N o con, solo con la S, transporte. Algo así también debe suceder con algunas palabras en inglés, ¿verdad? Así es que, bueno, Maybe. ahí estamos. Ok, if no more question, we're, we're going to continue, right? But remember, if you say, teacher, detengamos la clase y esta parte de aquí, este ejercicio, no lo entendí, yo siempre estoy a sus órdenes aquí, ¿ok? Now. Let's continue, please. Uh, we are going to go to the platform and we are going to see the video for today. Let me check. One, two, three. This is the one. Okay. For today, we have this 4.8, right? 4.8. Others of frequency. Okay, pay attention, please. After you finish this activity, please share your work in our discussion form. Give me a second. Okay. Here's the beginning, right? Use adverbs of frequency when talking about food. Let's get started by analyzing the examples on the chart. Adverbs of frequency. I always eat breakfast. I usually eat breakfast. I often eat breakfast. I sometimes eat breakfast. I hardly ever eat breakfast. I never eat breakfast. Sometimes I eat breakfast. Do you ever have fish for breakfast? Yes, I always do. Sometimes I do. No, I never do. Always. Usually. Often. Sometimes. Hardly ever. Never. Let me start by explaining what adverbs of frequency are and how we can categorize them. Adverbs of frequency 
are words that come before the verbs. And they express frequency. For example, if you would like to express that you take a shower every day, 100% of the time, that will be always, you can use adverbs of frequency for that. For example, I always take a shower. This means I take a shower 100% of the time. If you would like to express that you never smoke cigarettes, uh, this means 0% of the time. You can use adverbs of frequency for that. For example, I never smoke cigarettes. This means 0% of the time. The easiest way to categorize adverbs of frequency is by giving each a percentage number. So let's do just that. Always equals 100%. Usually equals 80%. Often equals 70%. Sometimes equals 50%. Hardly ever equals 25%. Never equals 0%. Next, I would like to explain how to use them and in which order to use them. Typically, we will use adverbs of frequency after the pronoun or subject. We can follow this formula. Subject plus adverb of frequency plus the verb plus some kind of complement. Let's analyze a couple of examples. I always eat breakfast. The subject is I. The adverb of frequency is always. The verb is eat. And the complement is breakfast. I sometimes eat breakfast. The subject is I. The adverb of frequency is sometimes. The verb is eat. And the complement is breakfast. I would like to show an exception to this rule. If you notice the example, sometimes I eat breakfast. With the adverb of frequency sometimes, you may put that at the beginning, just like you see on the example. Sometimes I eat breakfast. You may also say, I sometimes eat breakfast. Just like we've learned in this class by putting the adverb of frequency after the subject. And finally, you may say the following. I eat breakfast sometimes. You can put the adverb of frequency at the end of your sentence. The last point that I would like to touch in this class is how to form questions and answers about frequency. Let's start by understanding how to form questions. You may follow this formula, auxiliary do or does, plus the subject, plus ever, plus the verb, plus some kind of complement. Let's take a look at the example question now. Do you ever have fish for breakfast? The uh, auxiliary verb is do. After that, we have the subject, you. Then we will add ever. Next, we will add the, a verb, have. Finally, we need to add a complement, fish for breakfast. And we can answer this type of question in different ways. For example, yes, I always do 
sometimes I do. No, I never do. Now is your time to practice by giving lots of examples of your own. I would like for you to think about food, particularly the type of food you eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and express how often you eat this type of food. For example, I always drink coffee for breakfast. I, I never drink coffee for dinner. I hardly ever eat fish for lunch. I never eat fish for breakfast. After you finish this activity, please share your work in our discussion forums. Mm -hmm. We have a space for more, more example, right? For more example. So we're going to, to go back to the video. Okay. And Zero percent of the let's time. Let's make some question, right? The easiest way to categorize. As okay. Good. So now again, we have the, the formula, right? Subject, average frequency, and the verb here, right? Now, using this information, I will continue asking more students about more example, right? Uh, we continue with Suleyma. Please, Suleyma, can you give me another example using the structure, please, Suleyma? Mm, I, <laughs> I usually... Um, visit friends. Okay, I usually visit friends. It's correct to say I sometimes visit friends. It's correct to say that. Uh, Suleyma. Bien. Bien, por ahí va. Yes, right. <laughs> yes, <laughs> excellent. And mm -hmm. it's correct to say sometimes I visit friends. Yes or no? Yes. Yes, also. And it's correct to say. Uh, I visit friends sometimes. Mm. Is correct? Mm. No. In todo caso sería sometimes I visit friends. Okay, remember the exception, ¿verdad? right? Recuérdese la excepción. Sí se puede. Yes, yes, it's Porque possible. Porque rebelde. It's not common, right? <laughs> it's not common, right? But Suleyma, it's possible. It's possible, yes. Okay, thank you very much, Suleyma. You, you are in the game. <laughs> okay, thank you. Now, let me see who's going to help me. Sarita, please. Sara? Good evening, teacher. De la, good evening. One extra example, please. And we finish this part. I never fish in breakfast. I never? I never eat. Fish and breakfast. Ah, okay. You never eat fish at breakfast. Sarita, talking about breakfast, uh, do you know the meaning of breakfast in Spanish? El desayuno. Desayuno, right? And it, it had the same meaning, right? It had the same meaning in English and in Spanish because in Spanish, what is the meaning of desayuno? ¿Qué quiere decir desayuno en español, Sarita? La comida de la mañana. El okay, so in this case is des means contra, contra, des, contra, right? Contra el ayuno, des ayuno. Like you say desarmar, contra armar, ¿eh? desarmar, desayuno, uh -huh. contra el ayuno, ¿ya? Yeah? Because all the night you okay. pass all the night with no food. Ha pasado toda la noche sin comida, en ayuno. Uh -huh. Cuando ya va en contra el ayuno, desayuno. Es cuando comen, right? The same in English. Breakfast. Yes. Breakfast. Break is quebrar y fast. Uh -huh. Quiere decir ayuno. Quebrar el ayuno. Breakfast. <laughs> okay. 
It's a commercial, Sarita. It's a commercial. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Let's continue. Thank you, uh, remember that uh, these statistics are not exactly, right? Like you say, no, usually it's 80%. It's not 81. No, 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 no. 80%. No, no. It's approximately, right? It's to give you an idea of what is the frequency. So in this case, usually it's like 80%, but it could be 85%. Often is the 70, sometimes it's the 50, hardly ever the 25, right? And never is 0%, right? Okay? Now, let's make some questions here, right? Give me a second. Um, the questions here, right? Now, who's going to help me? Miriam, Miriam Gonzalez. También teníamos algunas clases, ¿verdad, Miriam? Yes. Yes. Pleasure to see Good evening, you. Teacher. Good evening, Miriam. Okay. Uh, I will make the question and you answer. Yo le hago la pregunta y usted responde. Yes or no, right? Okay. Uh, Miriam, okay. do you ever have uh, uh, coffee for breakfast? Yes, I do. Excellent. Oh, yes, I always do. Oh, yes, oh, yes, yes, I, I, always. I often do. Huh? That's okay. Now, again, Miriam. Una, una consulta. Yes, come on, come eh, on. Yo hice una pregunta, pero no sé si es correcta. Come on, tell me. Do we often have bread with chicken for dinner? For dinner, huh? Do, do we always have chicken for dinner? Yes, it's correct. Yeah, I like it. Okay, thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Okay, now, last time, Mini. Do you ever drink coffee for breakfast? Yes, I do. Uh -huh, yes. But yes, I... I guess I always. Okay, you always do, right? And the last question, Christian Perez. Christian? Yes, teacher. Do you ever eat tortillas for breakfast? <laughs> I sometimes. <laughs> okay, I sometimes do. Do, and sometimes do. I, you sometimes do, okay. Thank you. ¿Quién se me quedó sin preguntarle? Eh, Carlos, right? Carlos, do you ever drink... Hi, teacher. Hello? Do, ev Hello, do you teacher. ever drink milk? For breakfast, I I will I I will do. Okay. I I you will always do. do. You always do. do. Nice. You, yes, I always always do. Congratulations, because milk is absolutely necessary, right? For for your health. Para su salud. Vamos a ver los comentarios. Okay, yeah. Let me see commentaries. Uh, Alguien del grupo. Gloria Escalante. I always take a shower in the morning. Congratulations. That's nice. Uh, Xiomara. Uh -huh. I always have coffee in the afternoon. That's nice. I never eat pacaya <laughs> or shrimp, right? Oh, for me, I love shrimp, but pacaya, no. She eats, ah, look, with S. She eats fish for lunch. My family eats roast beef on weekends for lunch. Nice. Delicious, right? Roberto Quijano. Nice. I always drink water at my work. She usually takes the bus in this place. They often play soccer. I sometimes travel to Miami. Okay, good example, right? We are uh, improving. Vamos mejorando muy bien en la redacción, right? La última, Brian Pinto. I usually drink le lemonade. Oh, uh, aquí nos faltó una, una E, ¿verdad? Lemonade, right? For lunch. I often eat rice for lunch. I never drink coffee for lunch. Mm -hmm. Vean que está bien escrito coffee. Congratulations, Brian. I usually eat eggs for breakfast. Okay. That's nice, right? So that's it. Uh, remember, you have to finish the, the knowledge check, right? Tenemos que terminar esta parte, right? Knowledge check. Uh, Lo explicamos ayer. Yes, right? Uh, 
pero básicamente es lo mismo, ¿verdad? Es el sujeto, el verbo y en medio del verbo el, el adverbio, right? Mm -hmm. Así que espero que todos me lo hayan terminado. Ok, I don't know if you have any extra question. ¿Hay alguna pregunta extra? Teacher. Yes, yes, ok. Eh, Cody, Cody. Hay posibilidad, con respecto a este ejercicio, hay posibilidad que, que vaya primero el adverbio. Solo en el caso de sometimes. Sí, verdad. Solo okay. en el caso de sometimes, yes. Es posible. Okay, thank you, en el, la 1, por ejemplo, ahí está sometimes, ahí se puede ir al principio o al final también se podría. Yes. Ok, any other question? ¿Alguna otra preguntita? Teacher. Yes, yes, Walter. Eh, eh, veo que en el ejemplo que salió en el video, eh, always significa siempre y ever también. Sorry, ¿cuál sería el otro? Perdón, Walter, no lo mismo. escuché. N never. Ever. Ever. Ah, oh, yes, but ever is in questions. In questions. Uh, uh -huh. No, in sen I mean, you can say, ever I, 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 ever, uh -huh. I ever eat uh, chicken. Yo siempre como, no, no, incorrect. I always. Ever es como decir, si alguna mm -hmm. vez comes. Do you ever? But only in questions. Uh, mm, yes. Okay. Another question? Thank you. You're welcome. Teacher. Yes, yes. Una preguntita. Yes, siempre yes. la respuesta tiene que ir do. Cuando es... Al de, final. De, Jennifer, cuando es pregunta de sí y no, en el presente simple, sí. Ok, si es de WH, final, por ejemplo, simplemente... where do you live, for example. Entonces usted va a contestar de acuerdo a lo que le están preguntando. ¿Dónde, cómo, cuándo, por qué? Pero cuando es pregunta de sí y no, de sí y no, entonces usted dice, yes, I do, no, I don't. Y en este caso mete en medio el adverbio y dice, yes, I always do. Ok. O... Yes, I sometimes do. Okay. ¿Ah? En este caso, solo cuando... Jennifer, otra vez, solo en preguntas de sí y no. Ok, en el presente okay. simple. En el presente simple nada más. Okay. Good question. Okay. Buenas preguntas me han hecho ahora. Congratulations. Ok, no hay tiempo para más. Se me quedan los de Holcim, por favorcito. Good night, teacher. Good night, the rest. Good night, el resto. Good night teacher. Bye, teacher. God bless you. Que Dios me los cuide. Bye, bye. God bless you. Uh, solo vamos a poner aquí la camarita. Uh -huh. Por aquí estamos. Vamos a ver, regáleme un segundito. Aquí estamos con la cámara. Solo vamos a agrandar esto. Ya se me perdió la cámara otra vez. Perdón, perdón, perdón. Sorry. Ahí les aviso, ahí les aviso. Ok. One, two, three. Ahí estamos. Ok, thank you very much. Have a good night. 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 Good night.